Hey guys, welcome back to another one of my videos. I will be making another cake just in time for the holiday season. You can see my Christmas tree back there. So right now it's a few more days before Christmas, but I thought it's a good time to make something festive and of course a little bit creepy. If you haven't seen the movie before, The Thing is not a Christmas movie, but it's definitely a classic in my mind and probably one of John Carpenter's best movies. It's about a research team in Antarctica, I thought Snow, Hence Christmas, that gets taken over by a shape-shifting alien. I'd say what really makes the movie stand out is its use of practical slash visual effects, and that's always great inspiration for when I have to make cakes. So I'll be basing my cake off of one of the very first scenes in the movie where you really get to see the alien quote unquote, do its magic. It takes over humans and dogs, um, but in this scene in particular, it mutates this human head to make it look like a spider-like creature, like spider slash crab creature, and it's really gruesome and ugly. And that's what I'm going to be making a cake out of. So sit back and relax. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell, and I hope you enjoy watching me make this cake. I started off with baking the cake and as usual I'm using the boxed kind. People probably think this is just some shortcut, which it is, but box cake is surprisingly tasty. I always have to sift the flour first because the cake mix already has all those extra ingredients besides just basic flour and it does tend to clump. And I also sift so that when I mix in the food dye that I use that there aren't any white spots left behind when it bakes. So nothing is more unsatisfying than slicing into a cake and seeing all these little white clumps running through the sponge. I wanted to make this a pretty bloody looking cake, so I decided the sponge should definitely be red. That gave it the idea that the inside of the spider head is actually flesh. I mixed the dye in with a spatula. For some reason, I always hear using a spatula to mix, rather than say like a whisk, is better for gel food dyes. Once it was done and poured into my pans, I realized I probably needed to prep another full box of cake mix so that I could get the height of the cake that I wanted. Annoying, but I've learned not to take shortcuts or be lazy with the basic process. Into the oven they go. I try to place the pans for even heat distribution. Ovens can definitely be finicky about hot spots and that would make the cakes cook to uneven heights. And here they are fresh out of the oven. Um, they look more coral than red on camera, which I was concerned about at first, but if you look at old horror movies, sometimes having an off color can lend to like the campiness of the movie and I love a good campy horror movie. So I've seen plenty with blood that looks a bit more orange than red, but I feel like it makes it all the more fun to watch. Then comes the frosting. I also chose to make this red. Uh, in hindsight, maybe I should have picked like a lime green because it's Christmas and it's technically an alien, but that was hardly a regret. I then leveled the cakes very slowly and carefully, which I'm so glad I did because it actually made me catch a piece of broken eggshell in the sponge. Here's that shell. 
I also try to make sure that each sponge layer on my cake was as even as possible. Um, the spider head as a cake shape is tricky because it's placed upside down, and a head in general is a pretty round or oval shape. So I wanted to do all that I could to make sure that it's as stable as possible. I thought I'd leave like the round top of the cake on the bottom so flipped upside down, but that was actually a mistake and made the whole thing wobble a bit. Yeah, that was definitely a scary moment for me. I also realized after I had done the carving that I didn't do my usual sketch. This would have really helped me out in terms of how to lay out like the details and the proportions, but I just threw that whole step out the window, I guess. This created an issue where I kept thinking of the for This created an issue where I kept thinking of the forehead being at the base of the cake, when in reality the base of the cake should be his hair, right? I mean he's an upside down head after all. I hope that makes sense. It mostly sounds kind of funny to say out loud. So I did a lot of basic sculpting, just very slowly chipping away at it because honestly I was too nervous and trying to play it safe, which is always smart in the end. It looks absolutely ridiculous and I did have to sneak in a base made of like extra cake scraps and a block of modeling chocolate to kind of lift the whole guy up so his forehead wasn't touching the bottom. Then came the crumb coat to seal the whole guy in. This whole process from baking all the way to crumb coating happened before Christmas, but I actually took several days off to just relax and not do anything and honestly trying not to think about how much it discouraged me at this point. <laughs> My avoidant personality trait was fully in play. But I eventually bit the bullet, and yes, I'm re-watching The Office in the background, and started to work on creating my modeling chocolate. So I already had a lot of white candy melts on hand, and then lots of leftover pinks and reds from my previous project. I thought this was a great opportunity to use up those scraps because I hate the idea of throwing away like blocks of modeling chocolate, and I also hate how it just sits around taking up space in my house. So I gobbed it all together to make the chocolate base of my cake, which would be skin toned. If it was a little pink, that's okay. I then rolled the chocolate out into thin sheets. Um, I just needed this base layer down. I didn't want it to be too thick. Any extra details uh, would be added on top of this thin base layer. After the base coat was on, I started to insert the antenna and the legs using armature wire. 
Again, the sketch would have probably helped me out with the proportions, but it's also kind of fun to mess around and see what looks best on the fly. Or the spider in this case. Once the wires were in, then I could go in with more of that modeling chocolate base to cover all the wires up. I wanted the legs to look pretty thin compared to the head because that's just what the alien looks like in the movie. One of the parts I was dreading was how to get the texture of the legs work. I've seen like different iterations and variations, but a lot of artists like to give the legs a crabby-like texture. Um, this is super difficult because the bumps and little nooks of a crab leg are really tiny, um, almost like sand, and to me it's very hard to work with modeling chocolate at that scale. However, I found that my sculpting tools have this bumpy texture on the handle part, so I started to roll the tool all over the legs to give it more of that gritty look. With all the legs and basic shapes of the cake done, here's a montage of all the details I created to really bring him to life, including his nose, mouth, eyes, and that nasty stretched skin. The last part to add was his hair. I prepared some dark modeling chocolate, again using more scraps that I had on hand and just haphazardly placed it onto the bottom of his head.
For the hair texture, I went in with a very pointy sculpting tool to give him the basic streaks, and then went in after with the ball tool to kind of smooth out the scratches I had made. It really made for a good effect, in my opinion. Then the part where it actually comes to life, the painting. I used a mixture of red gel food dye and corn syrup, and I have to say it was a pretty successful attempt in giving him that nasty, bloody look. Like, he looked very wet. I can see why corn syrup has always been used to make blood, like on movie sets. And here is my spider cake. You can actually see the base I had inserted into his head to lift his whole head body up. But yeah, I was really happy with him. Probably my most favorite cake yet. Well, that's the video. I hope you enjoyed seeing the whole process. I had a ton of fun. Again, this is probably one of my most favorite cakes I've ever made. But thank you guys so much for watching and I hope to see you next time. Bye.